Hey guys, Tisha here, and we are back for another Sister Wives Season 7 review. If you all knew how many times I have begun the recording of this video and how things like phone calls and broken equipment <laughs> made me feel like, okay, maybe I'm not supposed to do this today, you would understand why this review may be all over the place, but you all know that I like to be consistent. So here I am. We begin this episode with Janelle meeting Sean for her workout. This is the gentleman that she's been working with since she left her last trainer, who she did see a lot of results from. But currently, she's at that point where she's not seeing anything again so she wants to challenge her body and he suggested to do rock climbing um they're in a facility indoors harnesses and all of that and she said that she's nervous because she's not physically ready she goes up a few steps on the wall and you can tell that she's already in her head before she really gets going i think she does four steps and she feels like she needs to get off because she isn't ready. Her trainer would not have her do this exercise if he did not feel like her body was capable of doing it. She admits to allowing the stress and, and the things that are going on with the family to get in her way. And for the first time in a long time, her fitness routine and things of this nature is the first things that she's doing for herself. So Logan, who was there, and Sean challenge her because she gets off the wall after those four steps to not quit and to get up that wall and make it to a certain rock that is on the wall. We see them supporting her and she does it and she feels really good. Logan is very proud of her and he was glad that he was able to witness the situation. That's the end of Janelle and her exercise. We then have Mary, who heads up to Utah to check on the water damage that was done to the house in Lehigh, as well as meet up with an old friend. I'm assuming that they had some type of home insurance based on the type of renovations that they want to do because they not only want to repair the damage, which looks like it's a lot, that was done from the water, but they also want to do more of a remodel because Cody no longer wants the home to look like a polygamous house. He wants it to be marketable. So Mary, who is there, meets up in the home with her sister, Rebecca, because right now their family is in the house and they're taking care of it. Um, she's there to meet with one of the potential contractors to get a bid for the home to see how much it will cost for them to fix it should they decide to want to do the possible renovations that Cody wants to do so that eventually they can put it on the market. We hear her talk to the guys. The guys say that they, they've done a few polygamous households, that there really isn't a major difference, which I kind of disagree because if you have four apartments or three apartments in this home with three different kitchens, that is a little different. And they, it wasn't anything extravagant. It was just different. Now, yes, there are homes nowadays, mansions, that have multiple kitchens and things of that nature. I get it. But they were acting like this was something that was really common. I said, okay, I, I don't think this is common. We see Mary pick up Leon to go out to eat and to meet her school friend, Sue Ellen, that she has not seen since elementary school. I think it was kind of odd that they're calling each other friends because this was when they were in kindergarten. Doesn't sound like it was something that continued all throughout high school and things of that nature, but we're gonna go with it because Sue Ellen is the person who contacted Mary and Mary did agree to meet up with her. So, so Ellen says that her and her husband were talking about polygamy and one of the things her husband was questioning was like how people who are polygamists even become involved with it. And when she was saying it, she said it made her think of Mary because she knew that Mary and her family were polygamous. And she said that one of the things that she remembered most was that her father sat on the high council that Mary's father had to go before when they found out um, that Mary 
and her family were polygamous. So Mary was surprised. She didn't know that uh, Sue Ellen knew that they were polygamous and she legitimately seemed surprised by it. She then looks over to Leon and says, her dad was involved with your grandfather being excommunicated from the church for polygamy. It didn't seem like this was an issue. TLC tried to play that music, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. This happened so long ago that I doubt that it's something that is constantly on Mary's mind, especially because she doesn't seem to have been that traumatized by the situation. She wasn't in that council meeting when it happened, nor were, was Sue Ellen. They just both knew of it. So we find out that Mary was five when she when her father took on a second wife and when they went uh, the mainstream Mormon church discovered it as a result of the mainstream Mormon church discovering it. He got called to the high council. They had a meeting that led to him being kicked out. Unlike Sue Ellen's father, Sue Ellen feels like whatever they decide to do, whatever their religious choices are, it doesn't matter to her that her Mary's beliefs doesn't curve, you know, their friendship. And I agree with that. I, I've said it many times. I don't go into friendships saying, oh my God, are they religious or not? Because I can't be friends with somebody who doesn't have the same beliefs as me. That's just not the case. Now, are there times where key things would matter to me for me? Yes. And I'm talking more so in a relationship. Like I have certain expectations of my husband. And if my husband is not one of those people who are willing to manifest certain things and speak life into me about certain things that I want to do, then I know that that's not someone that I could be with because I need you to have some form of belief. In, in, in a higher power, just me personally. Everybody's different. It doesn't matter to me with the friendship situation, but if we're gonna be merging households, oh, you best have some of my same beliefs because it matters um, to me. Everybody may be different. Um, she talks then about the old house that they used to live in and they go look at it. We see the home and it had two mailboxes and we find out that in addition to the home, that there is a basement that is uh, basically like an apartment, but this is where the second wife lived. Now, if this basement is like what I've seen in New York, like example, my auntie at her home, the downstairs is legitimately an apartment. It has a kitchen, it has its own personal entry, it has a living room, it has a bedroom, and it has a full bathroom. If it's something like that, then that would not be a problem to me. Although you don't get the same amount of light and all of that stuff in that type of situation. So it is very dark in basements to me. Now, if it's like the basements that I've seen in Northern Virginia, where to me, that's not technically a basement. It's just a lower level. That would really be great because on those, you really do get a lot of lighting and stuff like that. But... I can see why this marriage may not have lasted based on the way the outside of this house looked. That basement wasn't getting a lot of light. So Mary says that one of the things that she realizes is that when it came to polygamy, that she didn't become very secretive until she got older. It wasn't something that she worried so much about as a child, despite the different things that they were told not to do. Christine says that she just remembers that for a good portion of her life, it involved lying, lying, and more lying as early as eight. Which if you really put it in, into context, how do children who are being taught in their religion that lying is not good and lying is a sin feel when those same parents are coming and telling them to lie about this she said they were told that her dad would be put in jail if people find out they point out how they're told not to lie but they lie to tell the other adults of the world whatever it is that will keep their family safe so they're taught early to lie, and we wonder why the Browns were so good at lying 
to us from day one. They can phrase it whatever way they want to say it, but the Browns were a bunch of liars because there's so many things that they weren't honest about when it came to this family. Christine said she would rather lie to all the, mon the monogamous people out there than to lie to her, to, than to not lie and have her father thrown in prison. And I get it. When you're a kid, to put that on a child, that's a lot. It's, it really is a lot. She said, my dad didn't do anything wrong except have another wife. And it's okay for her to feel that way. Christine says how good it feels to be able to have their kids and family now live without the fear and let them know and tell whoever, you know, they want to tell about who they are and how they have this big family. And we hear how the kids used to refer to each other as friends because they didn't want other people to know that they were really siblings because that may create different questions about their household and things of that nature. So it just basically has made a lot of them feel free in that aspect, which I think is fair. I wouldn't want to live um, hidden. I wouldn't want to not be able to say that's my dad just because he's married to multiple people. So I could see how that would make a major difference in their lives. We then see Mary, see an older neighbor who claims to remember her. Their interaction didn't really make me feel like he was overly excited to see her. It just was like, okay, the camera's here. Hey, yeah, I remember you. <laughs> I was like, okay, why are we even seeing this? Because this is, this is whatever. So we're done with Mary. It's been a couple of weeks since they pitched their business to this investment company and Stan has called Cody to let them know that they are ready for them to come in so they can discuss the decision that the group has made. They feel like the money will help Robin, well by they I mean Cody and Robin, have a little bit of a life because Robin has been so busy with these 500 sales uh, every two months um, that she's ready to have a life. Please understand that I am saying that in the most sarcastic tone possible because she's not her the only person who had their hands in that. And I cannot remember which one of you said it, but someone said in the comment section, and I can't wait till I get to that part. I halfway think it was Tia. But I, if, if I'm wrong, correct me down below. But I think it was Tia that said that Mary did all these things for the company. And when it got time for the B&B, &B, Robin wanted a part of it, which I do remember Robin wanted a part of, of the, the money, the profit from that. When we find out that Mary was never paid out from Sister Wives Closet. I can't wait to get to that, but that is very interesting consider all, considering all that we know now that Mary wasn't paid out. Were any of them paid out? That's insane to me. So we've heard several times where Mary said that she was competing orders or she couldn't do some function. Example, she couldn't go to Janelle's 5K because she had to complete orders. But Robin is saying that she wants to have a life. Robin didn't help Mary. She didn't stay back and complete those orders. Robin went to the 5K. And I guess she had a nanny because she went to the 5K and I don't remember seeing her with the baby. So she, yeah, she can say all this that she wants to, but I'm not buying it. We then hear her whisper, I want to have a baby. It's always what Robin wants, no matter how it affects everybody else around her. Even though... She's supposedly struggling with this business. And even though she's struggling with uh, three school-age children and a, and, a, and a toddler, I think he's a toddler at this point, she wants to have a baby. Dumb. So they finally sit with Stan. They speak of all the revenue that they're losing because they're getting this traffic to their website but they're not making sales. And they think it's because they need to add additional merchandise. I think it's because the things that they were selling were not actually anything that we wanted. It was cheap looking jewelry that they were selling at a higher price. 
that I just feel like for me, it was not anything I would have wanted. They are in this meeting and they're t trying to tell him things that they've already presented. And I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter what you all say at this point. They're coming to you with the decision that has been made by themselves and their investors. Amy then brings up how they were worried about giving them the full amount because of the statement that was made about getting lazy and complacent. We then see Christine explain that when she said that, she was she thought she was saying like, look, we don't plan on taking all your money. Um, we don't want to be given anything without working for it. That's what she thought she was saying in confessional. Christine says that I might have made a mistake in what I said. Cody says, I don't want to pile on you. Here's the thing, though. I process out loud. Robin goes, you, 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 you know what, Cody? She's owning it, Cody. She's owning it. Because as we've seen over the years, Robin always feels the need to interject, even when it doesn't concern her. This man is trying to, to, to have a discussion with his wife. For once, he seems like he's being level-headed and Robin wants to interject. To the point where I'm looking like, okay, is Robin about to turn this into an unnecessary argument? But what I think Robin did was, because of the way Robin was reacting, I think she made Christine feel even worse in this moment. He looks at her and he says, let me just talk. Let me just finish. He said, they are new business people and any one of them could have said the wrong thing. Which I was glad that Cody said this because it's true. Because that was just one thing that they harped on. Best believe that presentation was not smooth. We heard that it wasn't. We heard Stan say after they left that there were a lot of holes and a lot of gaps and a lot of things they didn't cover. So it wasn't a perfect presentation. Let's let's get that clear, okay? Janelle says that she thinks overall with what happened with Christine, it was just a miscommunication and it wasn't that big of a deal. The fact that they had this whole conversation considering we know what happened at the end of this was like, okay, I think that they just wanted to make Christine feel bad. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just what I think. It's clear that Christine really feels bad about this. But regardless, if Christine said that or not, they already stated as soon as they left, as I said earlier, that they had holes. Okay. So that little statement didn't kill their chances of getting funds. Robin just says, I need you to know, because you know, Robin is going to give that, that pep talk. Christine. I need you to know that you did an amazing job and that we couldn't have done this without you. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to let you know that you just did you did so great, Christine. <laughs> I was like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Okay, okay, let me focus. Okay, let me focus. So, Stan says, we've had to talk about it and we agreed to give you $250,000 to $500,000 for a 5% equity. And then six to eight months later, we will reevaluate to see where your numbers are. And to me, that was generous because these fools really thought they were going to get $2.5 million from this company when you haven't shown that you can be trusted with that kind of money, right? And I'll be even more transparent. I think that the only reason why they were even given that much is because Stan kind of fought for them. Because for it to take them more, because they we were told that it would take up to a week for them to decide. So for them to go from a week to several, several to me implies that it was at least three or four. That means that there were some further discussions. They probably did some more investigating for themselves, probably tried to pull what public knowledge they could, they could find out. They did more digging to determine what they wanted to do. And 500,000 is nowhere near 2.5 million. They got the five. <laughs> they didn't get the mill. <laughs> okay. So 
after they see how they do in that six to eight months, they'll determine whether or not they're going to give them the full amount. Christine begins to clap and confessional saying, they're giving us the money. And the rest of them are like, okay, calm down. They're not giving us all of it, but they are giving us some. We see them leave. We see them discuss what they're going to do. The people come back in and they say that they will accept the offer and they're going to get the money from them in four to six weeks. So the Browns have officially now um, received additional funds and they now will be responsible for paying back this loan as well as giving whatever percentage that they're supposed to get. I think I said five um, to the company. And that's it. This was a short episode. Overall, it was all right. I think that um, I'm still kind of looking at this family like the fact that they thought that this was a better business move than the gym just seems ridiculous. The fact that they have Robin over funds when some of you all pointed in, out in, in, in last episode that this woman has over $30,000 in debt and you wanted her to be over the funds. It's crazy. I very much so believe, and this is, uh, this is an allegation. I, I, this is not a fact and I don't want to put it out there, but I'm just going to say it because this is what we do on this channel. I very much so believe that Robin and Cody were pinching off of this fund. I do because for Mary to have not received any form of payment makes me wonder if the other wives did either. Normally, when people create businesses, they pay themselves uh, a salary. They give themselves some form of money and they pay out of their business. So I want to know what they were doing. I halfway feel like Robin might have been pinching money here and there maybe not reporting some of the sales she made. I don't know. Something just doesn't seem right about the whole monetary situation. You guys, let me know what you think down below. Ugh, I'm going to try to see if I can watch one more of these and do a review because I got to go to work soon. But until next time.